like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, heck, we're even on TikTok. We're excited to engage with you. We hope you'll join us moving forward. Good morning, everyone. It's Andrew with The Market Mindset. Today, we've got Adrian Nixon, who's editor-in-chief, also known as Captain Graphene of the Nixian Journal. Uh, Really pleased to have him here because if you're looking for someone who's really well known in the global graphene community, this is your guy. He's a chemist by trade. He's worked at a, a number of large companies, including consulting work at Capgemini, which is one of the leading global consulting companies. If you go to nixianpublishing.com, you'll find a lot of different videos. You can see some of his background, which goes into depth, as well as some of the basics on graphene. But we want to leave that out today and just jump into some conversations with him. It's a real, real treat to get to have him on the show. Let's get talking to Adrian. So before we get into the whole wild and crazy world of what's being discovered, uh, I just wanted someone to to have a bit of the science background to see why that matters. And uh, also for a student, if there's students watching, why it's so exciting, because you're testing all the stuff still now. It isn't like this is a field where we we know a lot. It's all done. It's like, no, no, no. We're finding new stuff out all the time. And this is driving home. What I love to talk about is this whole future. So let's, let's just get into some of the applications and really, and when I say profound effect, uh, not only in the environment, but for everyday use, how is this going to change everything? Right. First of all, um, I think your viewers might like to see some graphene. Yes, let's see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, you know, I'm a chemist. I made some. So (laughs) this is uh, graphene nanoplate. And that's a, a, that's graphene, that, that big graphene oxide and graphene in suspension. In water cool. there so uh, i made that in uh, a lab i have so just to pl- just to prove to myself that it could be made and it was safe so that's that one here's another form of graphene this has been made f- uh, by the way that one was made from graphite the stuff in pencils yes um this one is made from biochar so it's like charcoal and yes. then they've they formed charcoal and then put another um, processing where they've taken the temperature up high to then let the the atoms rearrange themselves into graphene. So that one was made from crop waste, um, and there are lots of other ways of making graphene. Now they're graphene powders and dispersions. So uh, a dispersion is just um, a solid dispersed in a liquid. So just for clarity's sake, but for the moment I'll just talk about powders. And then the other form of graphene is called. CVD graphene. This is large scale sheet of graphene. Uh, CVD stands for chemical vapor deposition. And you get methane or methane, as you call it, um, gas, uh, which will come down onto the surface of the copper, get it hot. And the metal uh, causes the hydrogen to come off as hydrogen gas. And then the, the carbon atoms land on the surface. And when they land on the surface, they join up as that chicken wire structure. And you end up with a one atom thin layer of carbon graphene on the surface of that copper there. And that, I, that is actually there. This was made by a Californian company called Groltex. The applications to all this is so incredible. Now I, I'm oh, yeah. giving a bit of a plug here because I like GMG. We talk about GMG graphene all the time. I know you know them a bit as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, uh, the products that they've come out with, whether it's from batteries to coolants and uh, applications for uh, cooling down entire air conditioning units, this is just some of the first steps or some ways that we can start to improve upon uh, our daily daily wor- world uh, to, to make it more efficient, more uh, economic, but also, especially in this green and very conscious of the environment world, how can we cut back on carbon emissions? How can we how can we solve some of the problems? Because we know all we know all the problems. People are inundated with there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem. And what I love about some companies and, and people like yourself that are getting more attention is we have solutions. So let's fund some solutions. Let's get people excited that listen, there are solutions. Don't get overrun and overwrought with worry about problems all the time. Whenever you can focus that energy into let's find some solutions. Yeah. Shall we talk about some solutions? Let's talk about it. Yeah, because there's a ton of stuff going Good. on, as you well know. 
Um, where shall we start? Uh, do you want to start with the big one, with concrete? Let's go right there. Yeah, infrastructure. Yeah, okay, I love right. it. So this is one of the biggest applications for graphene at the moment. So this is powders. And if you take 0.01% uh, of this powder and add it to concrete, it will make the concrete 25% stronger, minimum. Incredible. It is. And what that means, that it's even more incredible when you start thinking this through because cement production for concrete uh, accounts for 8% of global CO2 emissions. That's coming back to your environmental uh, point, which is high on everybody's radar at the moment. So if you can get away with using a quarter less concrete, then that's potentially 2% of global CO2 without us having to change our lifestyle. Uh, there's more as well to tell you about the graphene enhanced concrete because um, there's been a pour done in Manchester on a suspended mezzanine floor, 150 meters by about 40 meters, something like that for a skating rink. And what they've discovered is that uh, the, this is some of the happy accidents, um, as well as all the carbon reduction stuff and taking out the reinforcement, they've found that the concrete sets faster. So concrete normally takes 28 days, a month to set. They can achieve that uh, hardness in 12 hours. How would, does this would affect the concrete in regards to Arctic cold in Canada? <laughs> like when you get like really cold in the concrete and then somewhere like Sao Paulo, Brazil, where it's just intense heat, will this affect the concrete in any different way? That is a really smart question. Um, as you know, one of my colleagues, Debbie Nelson, who we both know, uh, she's really space mad. And uh, she was thinking along the same lines as you, but for different reasons. She was thinking heat. Hmm, wonder if we could use it to make launch pads for rockets because Ooh, they yes. get hot when they go up and they might not last that long. So if we put graphene in, that could help disperse the heat. You're, you're thinking along the right lines there. Yeah. Uh, it might also help in uh, climates where you've got lots of change and variability because it's very difficult to pour concrete when the temperatures get too low. If you've only got a narrow window to pour, yes. then because this stuff sets so fast, then you could probably get away with um, targeting narrower uh, temperature windows as well. Um, the short answer is to answer you, 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 the question behind what you asked is, I don't really know at the moment if it will perform uh, as well across a wider range of temperatures, but what the things I'm picking up are, it also helps increase the tensile strength of the concrete, um, improves that by about 25%. So you can imagine expansion and contraction, it can handle a little bit more. So my guess is it probably will perform better, but I can't prove it yet. And I haven't seen the evidence, so I can't sort of go there officially. This is happening. And these are solutions that are coming from, this is one material right now as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is incredible. And we, okay, and we talked a little bit about space. And you, yeah. you uh, now I don't know if it was before or, or when before we were speaking before the interview, you can put graphene on the sun. Yeah. So let's walk through that and walk us through. Okay, what is that? What What do you mean? Like, how does that work? How's that possible? Well, if you think about it, um, if you if you make this stuff here, one atom thin layer of graphene on copper foil might not change the world. It's already being used to make sensors. Maybe we'll talk about it later. But if you can imagine, you can lift that one atom thin layer off and then start layering it up to make um, not, it's a form of graphite, but it's not like the graphite in your pencils because that's made of lots of little decks of playing cards. But can you imagine making a deck of playing cards meters wide? Yes. And then thousands of layers thick then you could, you're starting to get a material which would be, um, it would be as thi well, it'd be a thinner than this sheet of paper. Um, you, we call it cling film. You call it sarin wrap in the States? Yes, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. In North America. Um, okay, so uh, it would be as thin as sarin wrap uh, and tw let's say 12,000 layers, that would stop a bullet. Oh. And it would weigh probably less than that piece of paper. Wow. <laughs> and we could do all sorts of interesting things. So... If you just talk about the sun for a minute in space, then if we once this material could be made in large large sheets and layered up, then you can imagine you can make a heat shield out of it. Yeah. So for a spacecraft, so you can have a very very lightweight and very thermally resistant material. It would it doesn't. It's called uh, anisotropic, so it doesn't conduct heat very well that way, but it does conduct heat superbly that way. Yep. Yep. So when the sun's heat hits it, it would take the heat and shove it out sideways wow. rather than letting it through to the spacecraft. That's quite cool. That is very cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, so nobody's brain's... invented that yet. Yes, yeah, but the, I mean, this is the stuff that's being worked <laughs> on. So it's you know, where else? Like in everyday use, where where can we see this? Where someone might say, okay, immediately I can see this. I mean, we I've, I've mentioned like batteries. I mean, we, we see that there's like you know okay. uh, yeah. lithium yeah. ion batteries that you can have or graphite batteries. Um, what are all these some other things that uh, that that we should look on the commercial side or retail side uh, that are being worked mm -hmm. on right now? Okay, so let's deal with energy storage to start Ooh, off. Yes, with. yes. Batteries are part, batteries are part of that. Um, so where I'm seeing graphene make a big difference at the moment and where a lot of the investment money seems to be pouring in um, is supercapacitors. So these are, uh, if, if you're not familiar with capacitors, they basically, they're very quick to charge and they're very quick to discharge. They don't store as much energy in a given space as a battery can, but they're very good for fast storage and fast release. So they're a different kind of animal to um, a battery, but graphene with its very high surface area is making big inroads into these. There's um, a, an Estonian company called Skeleton who are um, making supercapacitors at the moment, and they're using them for what are called kinetic energy recovery systems, KERS. Okay. So uh, this is Formula One technology. So you put your foot on the brake. Yes. And it uses that to charge up the battery but the problem is it can't the battery wouldn't can't accept all that power so quickly so you put it into a super capacitor which can take it quickly and then release it when you want to set off again wow yeah. now so, these things have gone from formula one into um the curve systems are in battery vehicles at the minute but the main area is something quite boring really it's electric trams so this company here has put them into uh, trams in Poland and about three cities in Germany already. And in the past 12 months, so yeah, since November 2020, they've had 120 million euros poured into the company already for further development. Holy smokes. Exactly. No, hardly yeah. anybody knows about this yet. Yes, so yes. Th this is just sort of, this is big money. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, it's, and it's not laboratory. This is real world. And it's interesting you, you take us back sort of 10 years because there's some, something very important as well about the way technologies develop. We've been through a hype cycle or hype curve where uh, when the Nobel Prize was awarded and it has all the, uh, and then graphene was discovered to have all these amazing properties, then everybody thought, well, great, I'll just put graphene in something, it'll be brilliant. And actually, uh, you, people found they added, first of all, they thought they were getting big sheets of graphene and they said, oh, black powders, is that it? So they, they took some of the black powder and put it, formed companies to uh, do things, poured the black powder in, and it made things worse. Oh, and people okay. lost a lot of money. They didn't understand that you had to, uh, you have to add this very carefully. Um, you need the right technology and the understanding about how to mix it, but also the addition levels. Now, my colleague Debbie Nelson calls this, um, it's a bit like the seasoning. So imagine you want yes. to put salt on your food. You don't put in a kilo of salt on your plate because it'd be awful it wouldn't work but yeah. if you just put a tiny amount in it makes a big difference and it's exactly the same with graphene that um you it's people have realized you had you need to add less less is more and then you start seeing these big improvements and nobody expected that it was discovered by accident um yeah, yeah was, and on that with that i mean if you look at that black material and we've talked a little bit briefly because i like to throw companies in there doing cool stuff and nano explorer is one that has their graphene black which is like recyclable plastic so we won't talk about their product specifically, but give us an idea of what is that like? Because when I tell people that, listen, there's technology working right now where you can recycle plastic, they're like, wait, what do you, what? That can't be possible. Like yeah. it is. Yeah. So plastics and recycling, there's a number of things, avenues we could go down here. Lots of rabbit holes, how graphene can help. But let, let me just take you through the problem with recycling plastic. So yeah. Um, a polymer is just a long chain of atoms. And basically, the longer it is, the stronger it is, if we can think about it like that. And then you have lots of these um, chains. They're a bit like spaghetti. They all tangle up with one another. And um, that's and the longer they, uh, they are, the more surface area there is to tangle. And that's how things get stronger. That, that's a crude sort of approximation. The problem is, when you come to take that plastic and then recycle it, you're chopping it up, you're melting it, you're subjecting it to mechanical stresses, and it, it chops the polymer chain. So the polymer chain gets shorter and shorter the more you recycle it. So it gets weaker and weaker. So you end up with a poorer product. However, 
what's been discovered is if you add graphene, even with a shorter chain of polymer, it improves the way that the chains bond with one another and you can keep the same strength. So you can recycle the polymer, that's how it works. Um, I was astonished to, find, to hear about this. There's, um, there's a company in uh, Manchester that's just been formed. This, uh, this is a spin out. This is what you were talking about earlier. Yes, so one yeah. of the researchers, a guy called Vivek Concherry, doctor of, uh, um, I think he's uh, material science. And he works next to the geek. He's set up a company called Space Blue to make floor mats. And what he does is he solved the problem of recycling rubber tires. The, the problem is when you take a car tire and then chop it up, take the metal out, um, you've got like a rubber crumb. And if you try and make a new mat out of it, what happens is it will hold together, but after a while it just breaks apart. You'll have probably seen this sort of thing where there's yep. bits of rubber all over the floor. What Vivek has done is he's used graphene with a little bit of natural rubber and he's blended the two together, worked out some clever technology that I don't even know about because it's secret. Yeah. But he can make brand new mats that look like uh, virgin rubber mats from recycled car tires. So it's upcycling rather than yes. recycling. This is excellent. And I want to make sure everyone to take a look at the website and also go to, so it's uh, Nexion. Uh, uh, Nixine Publishing. Nixine Publishing, uh, as well as the YouTube channel, because the YouTube channel has yes. a lot of wonderful, like one minute to, to five minute uh, quick snippets where you find out more about you, but also graphene again. So if you want to just get caught up on some of the basics, uh, yeah. it's it's a wonderful resource for everything graphene. And of course, you know, getting down into the nitty gritty, uh, you guys really are the hub for everything graphene moving forward here. Uh, and uh, like I said, this is just a scratch on the surface. And I really appreciate you spending some time with us and educating us. And I really look forward to catching up with you again real soon. It's a pleasure. Let's do this again. Thanks so much, Adrian.